Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. We are in my testing world again and we're looking at the issue of the warp gate scenario um, that has been pretty much binned. Um, you can't get it now. If you've already got it, the advice is to uninstall it because of some issues. Um, obviously I did a video on that. But of course it's going to leave a lot of you with a big hole. Um, <laughs> so how do we fill that hole? Well, as mentioned in that video, there is a lot of work um, being done by the mods to reduce the number of additional mods that they rely on. So it's mainly the, the API libraries, um, technical stuff in the background. But essentially one mod get, gathers the information in a particular way and then the other mods access that. Um, and, and Warpgate um, is the core of a number of different things that do that so i did a video quite a while ago now a couple of months ago three months ago maybe four months ago a while ago um about summoning in creatures uh, and what you can see on the screen here is on the left hand side this is our original summon wolf macro using warp gate um and it was a nice simple macro that just put stuff in but we can't use warp gate anymore so how can we get around that and use something else um ripper to the rescue so Ripper has an alterna alternative module called Portal. Uh, so I've got, obviously I've got that installed. Just show you the modules I've got on here. Uh, and now a lot of this has got nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, again, it's just my testing world, but I've got Portal in here. Uh, and it's basically to replicate the same stuff. Now what's really nice is the way that Ripper writes his modules um, and the way that he explains stuff is really nice and clear. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But where we used to have this one on the left as being the, um, the, the the warp gate version of it, please summon a wolf, we've now got, I've just updated this macro um, to use the portal one. Now this looks slightly longer, um, but it's actually not. It does different things. So this original warp gate would bring in one with this quite simple. I'll zoom in on this for you. Uh, zoo, uh, sorry, new portal, add a creature, the name of the creature you want to bring in, how many which is an option you don't have to have the count in there and then spawn it so if i click execute here i get this a uh, little green thing saying where do you want to spawn that and i can click anywhere boom and it's brought in bats but i don't have any bats in my summon thing over here so it's spawning in the actors but it's not spawning in the the, the actual creature because i don't have that in my list over here so what you do need to make sure you, and again this applied for Warpgate as well, is make sure you go to your monsters and uh, just make sure you've got Bat over here in your actors list. That's it. So now when I run that again, I'm going to get the same thing. And notice the circle's smaller because it's already recognised that this is a small creature. And if I click, I've got Bats. And I can change this to anything I like, any of those actors. So the functions are still there. And I'm not going to go into in depth of, you know, getting this all sort of sorted and automated because you're all going to have unique situations that you were using warp gate for. What I am going to do, though, is drag over this really important web page here. So this is Ripper's wiki. And this is what I mean about Ripper's modules. He explains stuff really nice and clearly um, that, you can write your own scripts because he'll tell you how to do it. So the best place to start is on the right hand side, there's a lot of stuff here, there's all sorts of stuff that you know you probably won't need. But if you go to examples, uh, so I've effectively replicated this top one um, here, instead of Aboleths, I've brought in bats. So basic spawning, there it is. If you only want to bring in one creature, you can just use that one line. You don't need to have those three separate lines. Portal, spawn, that creature, done. <laughs> Easy peasy. Uh, really nice and simple. There is some advanced ones here. So again, a lot of what you might need for your macros are right here. He's already done it for you. Um, you know, so you can spawn them in with a particular color, etc. All of those things. How to use it to teleport. So you know, I want a new portal origin token and I want to teleport somewhere else. Should we try that? Let's try that. Let's make sure that's going to do what we've done, what we wanted to do. So I can just paste that in there for this testing purposes. I've already got a token selected, execute macro, and uh, let's stick him right in amongst the bats. Teleported. It's that easy. 
It's that easy. Now, obviously, spells like Misty Step is exactly what they do. So, um, you know, if you need to replicate that kind of effect, you can. That's that's it. Three line script. It will do it for you. Uh, so back to Ripper's Wiki. A um, bit more advanced teleporting. Okay, so to do with range and all sorts of other stuff. Um, advanced picking, spawning with a choice uh, with a choice die. Um, Dialogue. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but there we go. Um, you can try these out. Transforming tokens. So we know there's a module called Token Flip. We looked at that. Well, this can do the same thing. Set your origin token, the creature it's going to do, and then it will transform that into that creature. Lovely. Should we try that? Let's try it. Because there's this fun playing with these things. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a nerd. Uh, I don't have an Aboleth. I'm going to... I'm going to choose bat. It'll be interesting to see if it will change us <laughs> into uh, a bat of the right size. So again, we're going to pick on um, this chap here. And there we go. Yeah, pff, bosh. There he is. He's a bat now. Um, that was smooth, wasn't it? Really smooth. The way it scaled it down and everything. It was really, really nice. Let's get rid of, get rid of that out of the way. Uh, get rid of that one as well. Uh, so yeah, we, 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 we've now turned into a bat really simple and of course any of these macros you can put on your hot bars uh, if you you can attach them to items and things like that if you want to so there's loads of examples here we've just whizzed through them really really quickly but there's a very strong chance that with a little bit of fiddling anything that you're using warp gate for or have been using warp gate for portal will do it instead at least as well um, so in that video where I said, you know, the guys are working on it. Yeah, Ripper's well ahead of us on that one. Um, uh, and he's got that in. And if we just scroll all the way to the top, you can see just how much information he provides. So depending how much of this you can understand, he's very open about what he does. Um, it, it's, he's a great modder because his documentation is so nice. Um, even I can follow it. <laughs> and here we go. He's got that syntax there. Add creature, what the creature is. Yes, you can have update data, whatever that is. You can have the count, whatever that is. Well, we know what that is. That's how many you want to summon. Uh, so it's all there. Um, and if you're not somebody who does scripting or macros, of course you don't have to, but it can enhance your game. And I would recommend playing with modules like this where you've got this really good written stuff behind it from people like Ripper that you can actually pick through and go oh right and you can just have a play it's the best way to learn this kind of skill but I've gone massively off track of course of course I have so uh, just a reminder this was called Portal by the uh, the Ripper 93 Repla it's not a replacement for Warp Gate but it's uh, it, it does very similar things um, and um, you know, it, it's owned by Ripper, it's controlled by Ripper. His stuff has proved to be very reliable and very effective. I've never had a problem with his stuff, which is really, really good. So hopefully that will help some of you out with a bit of a hole who are kind of like, I want to keep Warp Gate because it's so integral. Um, but I understand that there are risks with it. Um, those risks are less if you're on version 12 and an older version of Warp Gate an older version of warp gate and an older version of the DD &D engine but if you're on uh the D, &D engine 3.2 or more then it's a high risk thing and of course as i said in the previous video if you're on version 12 you should not have warp gate um we don't know who's done what to that version to make it work in um, version 12 and there's lots of clones out there we don't really know what they're doing but there's a good chance all of them have got the same vulnerability that comes with that so definitely in version 12 don't touch warp gate if you're in version 11 would recommend you don't use warp gate if you're on the dnd engine specifically 3.2 um, if you're on older versions of the dnd engine on 11 and you've got a slightly older version of warp gate you can't update it now anyway you're taking a risk the advice that I got was just don't. Um, it's your game. It's your data. Back up often. If you're going to take the risk, back up often. It's the only way to give yourself any kind of security. A anyway, I'll stop rambling. <laughs> I hope that's been useful. Um, 
again, if anybody's got any particular, you know, niche cases that they're using Portal for, got a lot more experience with it than I have, because I've only had a very brief look, but I did want to get this out to you guys as quickly as possible, so that you're not kind of panicking, going, what the hell do I do? Can I replace it? Um, those more robust inbuilt functions will come with some of those other modules but portal is definitely a good way forward to support your needs thank you very much take care i will see you in the next one